All right, and we are live. Thank you, everybody. Hey guys, welcome back to Indie Three. Um, I'm Angela DeGrandis. I go by the Core on Twitter. And I'm Sean Burton. I go by Quincy Beold and everything else. So it was originally going to be just me doing the indie games showcase, but I I was like, hey, Sean, I think you could help me out. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, it came to my attention that a lot of you guys who might be viewing the stream might not know who I am. Um, Sean just introduced himself as the event organizer for GomCon down in Bremerton. Um, my name is Angel DeGrandis. I've been in the competitive fighting game community for about five years and you know various Smash slash Dota slash League of Legends d and d stuff for since time uh anew um and I currently operate kind of as an event organizer slash community representative slash community contributor for those various sub communities um just a little bit of insight in my background story if you guys were curious who this guy was running his mouth on the uh the camera um but I work with James our event uh streamer for most of uh, quite quite a bit of our co op uh, for event broadcasting. Um, so, that being covered, I wanted to get into some indie game showcases for you guys. Coming up first, I have that Rock, Paper, Scissors game trailer, which I know nothing about, but I'm assuming it's a rock, about Rock, Paper, Scissors games. Uh, so if we want to switch over, and I can play that trailer right now. Let's find know. out what it is. Okay. Ah, there's our audio that is muted that's not supposed to be. I will get that fixed, and we can restart the video. Okay. They were joking about it in the chat, and then it happened. It happened. I, I blame the chat. I am, I am. Oh, oh, over here. Ah. Uh, oh, there, okay, on. one moment. Gotta, gotcha. That's easy to fix. Bam. Okay. Check that out. Technology at work. All right, ready, James? Actually, hold on. Okay. Uh, Do you set the audio there? Yeah. Got it. Okay. What? I was not expecting that at all. So, uh, uh, real quick, I forgot to mention the producer, or the developer for this game goes by uh, Philosoplay. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so, you play as it looks like a three-player game with rocks, paper, and, and scissors. scissors. And I, the one thing that I'm curious about is if you can choose which class. Like, can if there's like four players, can you have like three rocks and one scissors? And can you play like a different game type where it's just scissors running away from rocks? Um, anyway, it, is, it, it brought up a lot of interesting questions in my head. But just for a quick recap on you guys who might have maybe missed a couple of tidbits of information from the trailer. It looked like... So, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the concept of rock, paper, scissors, you know. No, you have to run down <laughs> the entire thing for me. Um, so, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock, and uh, rock beats scissors. Don't so, forget... Lizard and Spock. Oh yeah, Lizard and Spock. <laughs> so um, there's actually a whole like fifteen tree thing that's really oh yeah, there's like the bomb and uh, evolution and all that stuff. Tree stuff like that. Science just... theory. Um, so a lot of people have been playing around with the idea of like multiplayer rock paper scissors for like adding different elements and like communications between the different choices. But to actually bring that into a game, um, they took a really interesting spin on it and they made it uh, like a top down, um, like I guess kind of how would you even describe that? It's like a, it's like, um, a kind of, it's like pseudo Bomberman esque. You're like yeah. running around. And you're like trying to bump into each other. Uh, Pac Man. It's like Pac Man. Yeah. Yeah. Except you're playing as like this holy trinity of rock paper scissors instead of just Ghost and Batman, uh, Pac Man and Pill Pac Man. <laughs> um, uh, the power ups look pretty cool. Like yeah. the, the super speed was pretty sweet. Um, one thing that kind of threw me off was the frame rate was a little low. I was a little chunky. 
Well, maybe that's what it's supposed to be. Oh, like, maybe, that was the, maybe that's the theme? Because whenever you play the game, it's always oh, it's rock, a rock, paper, paper scissors. Oh, okay. So it's always no, that... chop, chop, chop. Right, that's actually pretty clever. I didn't think about that. Um, anyway, it looked, it looked kind of cool. I'm actually going to browse through the trailer real quick because there's, there's a couple things I was interested in. So if you guys were curious about the game, you can visit philosophyplay.com um, or find them on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter under the same name. Attack your prey and avoid your predator. That's actually pretty cool because, you know, a lot of times it's like one person's playing the like the super powerful boss and everybody's yeah. running from him and it's or you have like a one to one interaction, but it's very rare that you get like the wait, how do I make a triangle? There we go. Like a triangle <laughs> of uh interaction because um like your prey is always gonna be chasing your predator. Yeah. So if you're chasing your prey, then you're also putting yourself in danger. So like it brings up a really uh, interesting complex of like risk reward and like yeah. catch twenty two to my gamer mind, and I'm like already thinking about how to like solve it, and I'm I'm already thinking that the power ups power ups can be the way to go. Yeah, power ups. Yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna try to fight on an even playing field. I'm definitely gonna need gonna need some power ups. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna die on an even playing field. Yeah. Um, the game looks really conceptually like very intriguing because of uh, that aspect that we were thinking about. Um, I'm kind of interested in see how the game fleshes out a bit more as we get more and more information, maybe from the dev or as they choose to release more information as to like how the game plays out mechanically. Because the concept's cool. Um, I want to see the mechanics of it and how they either enrich or you know maybe evolve the the, the cool concept. Yeah. Um, I wonder if there's going to be more power ups like oh, yeah. enlarging. Oh yeah, so you get like super scissors and it's like chung, 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 <laughs> takes up half the map. Or maybe you get like a like like a like wet boulder and it just like powers through paper for some <laughs> for some reason. I liked invisibility. I think switch would be a cool one where you like for five seconds you change it into like your reverse element. Or if you uh like if you change the controls for everybody else. Oh, like like a like a Mario Party dizzy state. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, maybe you could even spawn environment hazards or something. <laughs> um, anyway, that Rock, Paper, Scissors game by Philosophy Play looks really cool. I encourage you guys to check it out. Um, coming up next, I've got what looks like um, Pic Pixel? Pixel Pascal Studio. Um, press, you might want to go here. Oh, Press, you might want to get here. Okay, I've got, I got a video. I got a video. There we go. What is this? We hired the world's best lawyers. Oh, this is an ad. This is an ad. That's what this is. Intense our gum is. It's well intense. Can't say. How about? I've got an alpha trailer. You're making me sad here. Hey man. Well, it's not our fault. <laughs> it's an ad. Doug. I don't think clicking on it will make ah, it go away. You are indeed correct. But yeah. we have the gameplay video loaded now. So, awesome. let's transfer that over. Um, this looks like a gameplay video, actually. Dun, 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 dun. Going through the menu. He's level 3. Oh my god, he got 350 HP level 3. He's above level 3. Oh, okay, we got Fog of War. I like it. Oh, he's got encounters. Oh, interesting. The animation looks pretty fluid. Whenever you did that in Flash. Just walking around. Um, the dice base combat system is definitely very open. Open, uh, ended, so he could build on that right just completely compound, add critical hits. Yeah. Um, stuff like that is always pretty cool. I'm curious if you're supposed to be able to see fire because it penetrates through the darkness. Yeah, I would imagine that would be uh, a reason to have fire like be seen no matter where you are. The combat system is uh, it's it's so big, the map. You have so much room. It brings me to the question of if there you can fight like tons of enemies at the same time or if there's like really big bosses. Oh, that's More. an ad. More ads. Why? Not just an ad, a screamer ad? Yes, we got a screamer Gosh. ad. <laughs> Man. Yep. Why? What are they going to come up with next? Don't know. So let's see if we can find an actual release trailer. Press, you might want to go here. Hmm. <laughs> Game will be released for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Controls. WASD. ZQ. NDDB. Well, they have a preview right there. Um, so, Daggo21 at okay. Blodspot seems to be the place to go if you guys are 
looking for information. Um, the game is about a war between two kingdoms, Alteria and Belirium, with Belirium being the protagonist kingdoms. Two additional game modes other than adventuring and battle. Defend your base from incoming enemies. Oh, so did you ever play the game? Um, like the like the hundreds and thousands of games that you'd find on like uh, like Newgrounds, where you you play as like the super ballista guy on top of the tower and you like mow down. Yeah. The waves of those are pretty fun. I'd like yeah. to see that as an additional game mode. Yeah, definitely behind that. Especially if there's like an RPG element too, where like you'd take power ups that you'd find like flame arrows from the adventure aspect of the game. And take them into the other game modes. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, if it goes inside and out of all the different games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would actually look pretty cool. So, a bunch of screenshots here. It looks like we got tons of NPCs. Um, definitely still in the very early alpha stages. I'm, I'm sure he's uh, got a huge plan for stuff like e uh, AI upgrades and stuff like that. But... Um, I, I'm curious about how he develops the alternate game modes. That's really what piques my interest because we have this basic adventuring mode here, um, as we can see, with the Fog of War. Fog of War is always pretty cool because there's always something in the shadows. Waiting and you for have you. to explore it. Right, and then you have to like go and physically be there to like break through it. And uh, and then there's also random counters into the battle mode, which we saw where you can jump around. And it sounds like he's also adding the tower defense mode, which would be. Uh, that's actually what I'm. I really love tower defenses. I really love tower defenses. So, um, excited to see where this project goes. Um, definitely off to a good start. So, uh, we actually had a ton of excitement about a song for Vigo, a I, game made of paper. I heard about this, but one uh, one more time, can you run through everything? So, I actually don't know a whole lot about a song for Vigo because. But it's a point-and-click game made of real paper about a parent who accidentally kills his son. This game is about the, the aftermath, the fallout. So already sounding super grim, super dark. But, I mean, let's jump into the trailer. And I hope I have sound on. Bam, I'm going to double-check that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And, I don't know. I'm Simon Carlson and um, I'm making a game out of paper. I'm creating a game about depression and about a parent who accidentally kills his own son. It's about Steve and Karen. A couple on their way home from their vacation who accidentally kills their own child. Their child name is Vigo. A song for Vigo is about everyday life after a tragedy. How parents go through depression, OCD, infidelity and other taboo subjects while coping with their everyday life. I'm not making a game where you save the world. I'm making a game where you follow the people in everyday life after a tragedy. To understand the feelings of the game, I've been talking to several people who lost their children. Some accidentally even killed their own children. It's very helpful for the for the development of the project. It's a point and click game. In the first chapter you will be booking your own son's funeral while your wife tries to learn the to play in the piano in order to 
cope with her own grief. Each chapter has different topics it resolves around, like infidelity, OCD, and depression. There are also invisible choices in the game. Like, for example, your daughter, Sarah, is slightly allergic to mayonnaise. So you can choose to give her some, because she loves it. And that will trigger some short-term happiness, but have long-term consequences. There are a total of five chapters, and all will be released together. So, as I mentioned, the whole game is made out of paper and like every item is handcrafted and implemented in scene and lit. And I kind of like the analog material because it gives such a realistic impression and a distinctive look. The whiteness of the paper kind of contrasted dark story. It's fragile and folding these paper models takes a very long time to do but it's so worth it. When this game is finished I hope to be able to release it on Steam on PC and hopefully on iOS and Android. I really want to make this game. I want to make it happen. And for that, I kind of need your help. Because everything takes time. Like all the characters have to be made and animated in a stop motion away and then implemented. And about 40 scenes and a whole city to wander around in. It takes time, but I kind of need your help. and. With that help, I will make it look really detailed and really awesome. And I would be ever so thankful for that help. And remember that it's not about saving the world, it's about just saving a soul. That was sad, but really good. So um, that was actually pretty powerful. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So there are a lot of people who are excited about this game. I can see why. For lots of reasons. I'm excited about this game. Um, I'm going to go down the list real quick. I'm a huge fan of stop motion. It's a, it's a great medium for... Really just communicating how much uh, passion like someone can put into something. Like, to be totally fair, um, it's a lot different from creating like a really detailed 3D model, but just the pure amount of like soul and effort that you put into like physically molding something with your hands, like frame by frame, is just it really communicates a lot. And I think that's the theme of the game is communicating the story and the emotions and how events like these change people. And it's communicating that to the audience. And a lot of games take the perspective of we're going to communicate by role-playing. Like, you're going to be the guy who saves the world. Yeah. But this is a game that communicates purely through, like, a storytelling medium where you're the person experiencing this loss and this sense of tragedy and this sense of depression. And it's just getting through that. And I really like the comparison he made between like the contrast of the whiteness of the paper versus the darkness of the story. Yeah. Overall, it's just like, wow. When you said that uh, you're not like some hero going out saving the world and like what he said, right? It's kind of funny because I have a feeling that this game will have an impact on the real world because this speaks so much emotion that. You rarely find right. In I a mean, lot of games. I mean, it was a five minute and seventeen second trailer, but like the amount of emotional impact in it, which yeah. was very much complemented by his like you know somber tone. Um, it's just in his like the sorrowful piano. It's 
100% about communicating just the sense of loss and how to deal with it. And I would, Anyway, I was yeah. incredibly impressed. Um, a song for Vigo looks amazing. Um, I'm honestly very, very shocked. That was really, really good. <laughs> um, I encourage you guys to check it out. His Kickstarter is currently at 5,800. Um, he's looking to get 20K so that he can you know, eat, sleep at night, and hopefully get the game published. I know a lot of that goes into like licensing and development costs for things specifically for like releasing up something on the Android or OS platforms. They take a lot of the money. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yes, Song for Vigo looks incredible. Really excited about the game. Um, if you guys haven't yet, check it out. Buy the a Song for Vigo on Kickstarter. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some money down. I'm yes, yeah, you. <laughs> that looked. <laughs> yeah, you're not alone. That looked really wow. good. That, um. Yeah. So, uh, I know that was kind of a long trailer, and I do want to get to everything else that we have prepped for you guys. Either way, uh, excellent work, and I'm really excited to see how that game fleshes out. I think we've got time for one more, and okay. then we're going to prepare for our next panel. All right, All so right. coming up next, I've got Tango Fiesta. Sounds exciting. So, this is currently available on Steam Early Access right now. So, if you got, oh, I got that cool concept art with the Rambo-esque. Looks like I've got a trailer for you guys. This is so 1980s. I feel the testosterone just pumping within me. This is the best. <laughs> 80s are the best. All right. Let's see what we got. No ad this time. Yeah. The year is 1981. Evil dictators, aliens, and mindless criminals threaten to turn the world upside down. You wouldn't want it any other way. After all, every hero needs a nemesis. Gordon! Evil has many faces, and this one is a hundred percent Australian beef. He styles his stash with unbridled rage, and waxes his chest with the blood of his enemies. But you ain't got time to bleed, so you're gonna need some state-of-the-art bang bang! The Arius A1, the Uzi 9mm, the 12 gauge, the Sada, the Grenade, the Manual, the Uzi 8mm, Milk Milk Studios and Mastertronic presents Tango Fiesta, the Mac and Cheese, Hong Kong 83, the Steel Auger, the Hong Kong 84, the Matrix 80, the Viper Combat Rifle, the Woodstock 69, the Cobra Cleaner. Splash your cash in the gun shop. I'd buy that for a dollar. Or just grab that green from your friends in four-player online and local cooperative play. Endless four-player arcade action in procedurally generated world. No two playthroughs are the same. Tango Fiesta! The game begins on Wednesday, June 4th, on home computers everywhere! The 80s are back on PC and Mac! So, <laughs> wow. That uh, definitely lifted uh, the uh, sorrow mood. Yeah, the, the sorrow, <laughs> the, the clouds of depression and shadow have been cleared with the power of raw Australian massive muscle. <laughs> <laughs> and way too many guns. Um, Tango Fiesta. I, I, at first I was like, oh, this is like a cool revamp, retake on Contra, right? Like the the style of you know running gun top down with yeah. a like an eight directional uh, shot play, and you can you know shoot and move at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, although I think the multiplayer element is what interested me the most. That will be fascinating. Um, I'm curious if there's like multiplayer uh, story run through, or like if it's like a multiplayer mission base where you guys select like, oh, let's assault this castle together, and you like get your your friends in the lobby, or if it's like you know if it's just like a duke it out kind of mode. Mm-hmm. But the melee looked super hilarious. Got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the the mega machete, and you just like have a whirlwind of death in front of you, like spewing carnage all over the forest, uh, the Bahamas. And everyone drops like little gold balls. Oh yeah, everywhere. and there's like the the bullet indicators. Um, they definitely had a lot of fun with the gun names. That was pretty apparent. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> and I can tell the voice actor had a lot of fun yeah. doing that um, as well. So compliments on you guys. It was excellent work on the trailers. There's definitely a lot of production effort that went into it, but it did a really great job of communicating what the game was all about. Um, so it was a great showcase into what te- uh, Spilt Milk Studios is all about. Um, so if you guys are curious, once again, the game is available on Steam Early Access right now. Um, do we have time for one more, James? Yeah. If you're quick about it. Okay, let's go. Quick. All right, this is a one-minute trailer. All right, let's go. Children of Liberty. Early access trailer. Hello. Oh, who are you and what is going on? For years, a group of brave citizens have been working in the shadows, fighting Parliament's oppression in Boston. We've had an increasing number of powder alarms in the last few months. There's an intruder in the house! Unfortunately, our top spies have been arrested. Every available redcoat is being recruited for this mission. Bloody hell! We will not have you meddling in our affairs anymore. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but I like meddling in your affairs. I'm not giving up on them. We had a deal. You're in over your head, young man. Joey, run! At this very moment, Britannia burns. <laughs> I wish. So, Children of Liberty. Um, right off the bat, I was really intrigued by the whole like planner 3D 2D thing. Yeah. How they um, and then I was also really um the way that they plotted out the planes on the floor. Yeah. Like you had the red line for like this is your plane of movement, and, like the blue line for the black on plane of movement, upon which the 2D sprites moved. Uh, yeah. It looked really cool. Um, also, the way that they shaded the 2D, mo- uh, like the 2D models or sprites, looked really good. Um, overall, the vi- visual presentation of the game definitely a plus. It was um, very fluid. Yeah, like the animation was really good. Uh, the art was great. The backgrounds worked well together. Um, it seems like they also had a lot of fun with like the, you know, the Children of Liberty, Old Britannia kind of setting of yeah. rebelling against the red coats. Um, so it is available for early access. Rides forth April eighteenth. Um, so once again, buy Children of Liberty on Steam. It's only ten bucks. Only so, ten bucks. Yeah, it's only ten bucks. So like, uh, you know, Steam is great for available, uh, providing availability for you know these any titles to kind of break out. Yeah. And uh, ten bucks is a pretty pretty competitive price point. So if you guys are interested, the the game definitely looks uh, very fleshed out. It's got a lot of development put into it, effort wise. Um, look, definitely looks like a great hit. So, yep. I believe that wraps up our time slot. Right? Yeah, we are at time. We're going to take a two minute break and then we're going to run our next panel, which is creating effective drama in games. This one should be really interesting, folks. I, I'm yeah. wondering if they have anything to say about a story for Vigo. Yeah. Because, I mean, that game, I mean, that affected I, tons I felt of the drama, drama in the trailer. Yeah. 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 Um, so, anyway, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I'm uh, Angela Grandis. I go by Core. I'm Sean Burton. I go by Quincy Biol. And we'll uh, we'll hit you guys up later in the week. But this All wraps right. up our indie game showcase for the day. Bye hi and dream big. <laughs>